So it looks like we have a good amount of people signed in already. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Uh, so for, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Garrick Lim. I'm uh, one of the physical therapists with React Physical Therapy. I work primarily out of the West Loop. Um, if you guys all open the, the chat function in the meeting, um, we have another physical therapist with us, uh, Franco. He's going to be in charge of answering any questions that you guys may have during the presentation. So if you do have any questions, feel free to type it out in the, the chat function and not the Q&A function. Um, and when you do, just make sure that you either hit uh, to all panelists or to all panelists and attendees so that, so that we can all see uh, what the question is and be able to answer it for the group. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Cool. All right, let's get started. So the topic that I wanted to talk to you all about today is um, the effects of what tight hip flexors may have on your body and how you can fix it. Let's see if I can move this. All right. Uh, so before we, we talk about what the hip flexors are and how they affect the body, it's, it's always good to understand what the joint is that the, the muscles are affecting. So specifically the hip joint. Um, a quick anatomy lesson, I guess. The, the hip joint is a ball and socket joint. It's one of um, two ball and socket joints in your body, the other one being the shoulder. And it's made up of the ball, which is the, the femur or the, the upper thigh bone. Um, and the socket, which is called the acetabulum, um, and that is part of the, the pelvis. So because it is a ball and socket joint, it is a multi-axial joint, meaning that it can move in all different directions. It can go into flexion, which is up in front, extension, going behind, um, abduction, going out to the side, adduction or adduction, going in towards the middle, and then rotation, both externally and internally. Um, and it is actually the second most mobile joint in the body, second to the shoulder, which is the, the second ball and socket joint in your body. So because it, it's so mobile, um, it requires a lot of stability. And a lot of that stability comes from all the muscles that surround that joint, um, specifically the hip flexors. And it's, it's also important to note that uh, if one group of muscles responsible for stabilizing or moving the joint, uh, is tight or isn't working properly, it's going to affect the entire system and kind of throw it, throw it all out of whack sense. All right, so now going more into the, the hip flexors and what they are. Um, these are the group of muscles that are responsible for creating flexion at your hip or bringing your leg up towards your, your trunk. Uh, and you have four main hip flexors in your body. These are the psoas, the iliacus, the rectus femoris, and the sartorius. And I'll go into each one of these and what they are. Um, the psoas and the iliacus are gonna be the ones that we're gonna be focusing more about today, just because these are the, the prime hip flexor muscles in the body. Uh, the rectus femoris and the sartorius, they do uh, contribute to hip flexion, but because they also contribute to movement at the knee, they're two joint muscles. Um, they don't play as big of a role in hip flexion as the psoas and the iliacus. Um, also with the psoas and iliacus, I know those muscles might be ones that a lot of people are unfamiliar with. Um, and the reason being is because they're just not visible or not as visible compared to let's say the, the rectus femoris, which is part of the quadricep group. Um, so I think that might be a little bit more important for you, for you all to understand what, what these muscles are today and how they play a, a big role in how your body works. So we'll mainly be talking about the iliacus and the psoas. So some of you may know it more um, as the iliopsoas. They kind of just combine the two names together and there's good reason for that. It's because even though the, the psoas and the iliacus, they attach to different areas of the body, they actually come together and join into one, into one muscle before attaching to the bottom part of the leg over here. So the psoas, I guess the first hip flexor muscle that I'll talk about, um, that attaches or it originates from all sides of your lower back and the spine. Um, so all five lumbar vertebrae, those segments in the spine, it, it kind of comes off the side and it also attaches to the discs. 
in the spine, which is going to be important later on. And it, it comes out to the side after coming off the spine. And it comes down and it actually meets with the iliacus, which originates from the, the inside of the pelvis over here. And those two muscles come down together in front of the hip and attach to what we call the lesser trochanter um, on the femur or the upper thigh bone. So you can see that when these muscles are shortened or when they're contracted, it's actually going to pull either the, the femur up towards the trunk, or if you're, if you're standing on your leg and you're stationary, it's going to pull your, your trunk down forward into like a forward bending motion. There. So uh, how can these muscles become tight? The, the number one reason why hip flexors become tight in most people is because of how we position ourselves throughout the day, um, specifically in a seated position. Um, the average adult sits from anywhere between 10 to 13 hours a day. So if you think about what we do during a regular day is we, we may sit six to eight hours either in school or at work, um, plus one to two hours if you're commuting to and from work. Uh, we sit down whenever we, we eat, uh, when, we, when we watch TV, when we read. Um, basically, whenever we're not moving, we're, we're sitting. And that, that essentially puts our bodies already at a disadvantage because what it does is it creates hip flexion at that joint already. And if you think about the hip flexors and what they're, what they're meant to do, they, they shorten when the hip is flexed. So if we're constantly putting ourselves in a, in a hip flexed position, um, those muscles are constantly gonna be in that, in that shortened state. And this is um, definitely worse for people with longer legs or people who are a little bit taller, just because now you're creating more flexion if you're, if you're not sitting in, a, in an optimal chair at the hip and you're creating more shortness or tightness at those muscles. So uh, the most important part of this presentation is what, what can these muscles do to affect your body? So if you think about uh, being seated for a long time, um, and if you already have tight hip flexors, uh, those muscles are gonna be already tight. And let's say you've been sitting for, for four to five hours at work. Um, those muscles are gonna become used to being in that shortened position. So then when you come out of that, that sitting position, they're not, they're not going to want to elongate as, as much as we want them to. So that's gonna create what we call an anterior pelvic tilt. If you look at this image right here, uh, just because those hip flexor muscles in the front being already shortened when you come out of that seated position, they're going to actually pull on the pelvis, causing it to rotate forward in the front over here. Uh, what that does is if you go over to this image here, so we know that from being seated for a long time, you may have a tight iliopsoas or that hip flexor muscle. Um, what it's going to do, it's going to pull that pelvis down in the front, but also pull it up in the back this way. So that's going to cause these uh, erector spinae or the low back muscles to become tight as well. And then if we think about the, the muscles that work opposite of these muscle groups, um, you have the abs and the glutes. As that pelvis starts to tilt forward, you're gonna see that the abs start to lengthen in the front over here, and then the glutes as well start to lengthen in the back with that, with that forward rotation motion. So that's basically gonna cause those muscles to be put at a disadvantage, um, and they're gonna become a little bit more inefficient or weak. And that's gonna be important later on when I talk about uh, the effects of the tight hip flexors. Um, what they can also cause is bad posture overall. So going back to that first image over here, so we know that the psoas comes off of the, the lumbar spine. And one thing that we know about the spine is that it, it connects pretty much the lower body to the upper body. So if one part of that spine is affected, it's going to play, play a role in affecting the rest of the spine going up towards your head. Um, specifically, if that psoas is tight, and you go to stand up from a seated position and you know that muscle is tight, it's going to pull that lumbar spine forward into more of an excessive curvature that you see right here. And the rest of the spine is gonna respond accordingly by either going in the opposite way in the mid back, creating excessive curvature, 
and then in the neck and upper back is going to create an excessive curvature in the opposite direction to kind of help balance that out a little bit. So it's going to, it's going to produce a, a forward protruding head, putting more strain and stress and tension on the muscles in the head and the upper back and the shoulders, um, creating more imbalances in your body, uh, causing more compensations to occur and just leading, leading down that bad path of, of uh, bad posture and compensations. Uh, so the next thing that the hip flexors can do, going back to what we talked about with the anterior pelvic tilt, is that it basically creates um, inefficient movement. It places your body at a disadvantage for when you want to be physically active or do anything dynamic or strenuous because it causes these, uh, these weaknesses in the certain muscles that are responsible for stabilizing um, your joints and, and your core. So we know that when your, your hip flexors are tight, it creates this anterior pelvic tilt. It causes weakness of the abdominals and the glutes. Um, whenever you go to do something uh, physically taxing on your body, I know we have a lot of runners here, um, it's gonna cause a lot of other issues because those muscles are responsible for stabilizing everything in the center of your body. So if those muscles aren't doing their job, um, other muscles or other joints around it are gonna be forced to work harder and take on more of that load. So that's when you can start to experience things like, like glute pain, uh, hamstring pain. If you go further down that kinetic chain in the leg, you're gonna feel knee pain, um, ankle and foot pain. And then like I said before, uh, upper back and neck pain, you can even start to get uh, like tension type headaches if, if you've been in that bad posture for a long time and start getting that increased tightness in the muscles in the neck. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing real quick to see if I can fix. All right, I'll probably just keep it at this view. Uh, all right, so what I wanted to talk about next is basically what we can do to help address these tight hip flexors um, in the body to kind of help prevent any of those bad things that I mentioned before from happening. Uh, so the one thing that I wanted to talk about is, is an exercise called a release or an active release. And for those of you that have, or that are familiar with um, React, we do this a lot uh, in terms of our manual uh, treatments. And then also we, we prescribe it a lot for our home exercise programs. Um, but for those unfamiliar with it, uh, an active release is basically a different type of exercise that you may be familiar with. Um, it's different from both a strengthening exercise and a stretching exercise in the sense that it's, it's meant to help loosen the muscle up and prepare it for any kind of activity that you want to put it through, whether it be strengthening or stretching. Um, the, the release has two, uh, two portions to it. The, the release part basically entails putting uh, direct pressure, direct static, static pressure to the muscle belly itself at whatever point you may feel is tight or what we call restricted. And then there's an active component to it where you are actually moving your leg um, in a certain motion to help facilitate the, the movement of those muscle fibers so that it can loosen up uh, even more and prepare it for any kind of activity that you wanna put it through. Um, I, I linked a, a video to, to the hip flexor release if you guys want to check it out later. Um, but I'm also going to demonstrate it for you guys right now. All right. So what you want to do first 
for this release is you want to find some kind of uh, trigger point ball. Um, I'm using just this regular cross ball. Uh, and what that's going to do is apply, it's going to be used to apply that deep pressure that I was talking about to that muscle group. Um, for the hip flexors, we know that they sit really deep inside your abdomen. So I like to use the foam roller as well to kind of create more height for it so that when you do lay on it belly down, it's able to sink a little bit more into your abdomen so that you can target that, that psoas muscle a little bit better. So I'll show you guys how you can set it up and do it by yourself at home. Basically, foam roller goes on the floor here. To find a psoas muscle, you're going to want to find your belly button because we know that that psoas comes right off the lumbar spine. So come about an inch or two off to the side of the belly button, and that's where you want to kind of put the pressure with the ball. And then you're going to kind of balance it on top of the foam roller over here. Relax your abdomen so that it's able to sink in as much as possible because we know it's pretty deep. And then you want to kind of lean onto it so that you can get as much of your body weight on it as possible. So that's the first compo component to the active release. The second one is going to be that active component. So what you want to do, like the picture showed, is you want to bend your knee. And the purpose of this is to create a motion of the muscle fibers going underneath the, the pressure of the ball. So we're just going to go side to side over here like this. And you can hang out on this for about 30 or 40 seconds. Um, it's going to be pretty uncomfortable at first just because the muscle we know is pretty tight. So it's going to kind of try and fight you a little bit. But the longer you stay on it, uh, the, the more it should loosen up and the more it should allow you to get deeper and deeper into the muscle. So we're going to stay on it for 30 to 40 seconds. After that, we're going to move on to the iliacus. So that was the psoas, the first hip flexor group. The iliacus, we know, um, attaches from the pelvis. So it's going to be a, a little bit lower from where we were before. Um, to find your pelvis, you can go ahead and feel for that, that bony bump on the side of your hip kind of where like your, your pants would sit. Um, and then to get on the iliacus, we just want to come right off to the side over here. So same idea, foam roller on the ground, ball on the foam roller, and you're placing it right on the inside of that, the pelvis, or that bony bump. And then apply that deep pressure by leaning more onto the ball. And then with that same leg, you're gonna go side to side. So doing the same motion as you were with the psoas muscle. And again, you can stay on it for about 30 to 40 seconds. You're gonna to start to notice that the muscle is gonna give in a little bit and loosen up. So then you can start applying a little bit more pressure onto the ball to help get deeper into that muscle. Cool. And then the next hip flexor group, if you remember from earlier in the presentation, uh, there's a question about if that is a foam roller on a ball. Yeah, so I, I just use this, this regular uh, short foam roller, and then I just stack the, the ball on top of the foam roller just so it gives a little bit more height in it, and it allows you to sink a little bit deeper to get to that, that uh, hip flexor muscle loop. Cool. So if you remember from earlier in the presentation, the, the other hip flexors that are responsible for creating that motion, um, you have your rectus femoris, which is part of your quadricep, and your sartorius. You can actually hit those muscles together, and I'm just going to use the foam roller to do that. So now I'm going to come a little bit below where I just was and hit this area of the quads to get the, the rectus femoris and the sartorius. So what I'm going to do is, again, apply pressure by just leaning my weight onto the foam roller. And what I want to do here is the same thing. I want to create movement of the muscle fibers by kicking back and forth. So doing the action that those muscles uh, are supposed to do. And then you want to stay on that spot for about 30 or 40 seconds like you did before. Afterwards, you can move down and find another spot that, that may be restricted or tight and do the same motion. So for 30 or 40 seconds. And then the, these muscles are a little bit bigger and a little bit longer than the, the psoas and the iliacus. So you want to hit it at a couple of different spots.
Cool, and that is uh, how you release your hip flexors. So the next thing that I want to talk about is how you can stretch the hip flexors. So we know, especially if you sit for a long period of time, um, those, those hip flexor muscles are going to become used to being in that shortened state. So what we want to do after releasing it and after getting it ready to, to move is we want to retrain the, the positioning of those muscle fibers so that they become used to being in a more um, elongated and natural position. So one hip flexor stretch that I really like to do is this uh, half lunge stretch. And this one is really good for targeting both uh, the psoas and the iliacus. So what you're going to do is whatever side you want to stretch, for me it's going to be my left side, I'm going to have that knee down on the ground. And then with the opposite leg, I'm going to come out in front over here. So I'm going in the opposite direction of what those muscles are intended to do, which is flexion. So I'm going back into extension. Uh, I want to keep my knee right above my ankle and not coming forward onto the ankle because that may put a little bit more stress and strain on the knee and the ankle itself. So I want to stay right here. And then what I want to do is think about bending or dropping the weight of my body down into this stretch. And you should feel that stretch coming all the way from the hips down maybe a little bit into the quads. Uh, from there, if you can see in the picture, and I'll, I'll try to visualize it on the webcam as well. Uh, we know that the psoas kind of comes towards the, the lumbar spine or the center of your body a little bit. So we want to go in the opposite direction of that to try and target the psoas and the iliacus a little bit more. So once you hit this position here, you're going to take that same arm and you're going to lean towards the opposite side. And you should start to feel that stretch kind of come a little bit into the abdomen a little bit. It's going to feel like a really deep stretch in your stomach. Uh, and that's how you know that it's targeting the, those hip flexor groups, the psoas and the iliacus. Cool. And for any kind of stretch, I always like to stay in it for at least 30 seconds. Um, just so you know you're, you're creating a better change in the, the length of that muscle. So yeah, that is the, the hip flexor stretch. Uh, again, always try to do the release before the stretch just because it's, it's a good way to help loosen up any kind of restrictions or tightness in the muscle and it just, it allows you to get a better stretch afterwards when you do go into that, the stretch itself. Well, and that is basically how you uh, manage tight hip flexors. Um, so if you, if you guys have any questions, I have uh, my email address and the phone number to the, the West Loop Clinic in this presentation at the end over here. Uh, feel free to send me any emails if you do have any questions or I'll hang out for a, a little bit longer um, and try to answer any questions that we may have in the chat. Uh, I just wanted to remind everyone that we are open uh, for, for all in-clinic services, telehealth services, and also uh, in-home services as well. So if you, if you feel like you do have tight hip flexors or if you're just getting a little bit stir crazy from being inside during the quarantine and everything, and you, you want to see if your body is ready for, for any kind of activity or, or getting back into shape, feel free to either give us a call or send me an email and we can set you up with either an appointment or a free injury screen to see, see if PT can help out with you. Um, if you are having any issues specifically at the hip as well, we, we do have another webinar uh, happening coming up in, um, in 11 days on June 15th. Uh, I think Michelle and Rebecca, um, other PTs that work out of our Lakeshore East Clinic will be talking about uh, hip impingement specifically. Um, and hip flexors can definitely play a role with uh, causing more pain related to hip impingement. All right, thank you everyone. That's it. I'll, I'll hang out for a little bit longer and answer any more questions that, that come up.
regarding the question to the hip impingement or the hip replacements, uh, yes, we, we work with all, all types of patients, um, including those that just came out of surgery with, with hip replacements. Yeah, so there was a question um, asking about where to put, put the ball exactly. So there's a couple of different places that you would want to put the ball. Um, so we know that the, the psoas comes right off of the lumbar spine. So a good way to find that is if you find your, your belly button. And depending on which side you, you want to target, uh, you, you would just come off maybe like an inch or two to the side of it. So right where that, that psoas muscle would come off, and then it would travel down into your hip like this. That's for the psoas. Uh, the iliacus we know comes right off the pelvis. So if you come down a little bit lower from where you just were and find that, that bony bump, that's gonna be the pelvis. And you wanna come right off of it on the inside and put the pressure there to get the iliacus. Mm -hmm. So the, the link to, to the, the hip flexor release is, should be on in, in the PowerPoint itself. Um, I know this should be available on our website afterwards, uh, but if you have trouble finding it, you can go to YouTube um, and look up React Physical Therapy. We have a, a YouTube page with all, all the videos of all our exercises that we do. And in that page, you can specifically search up um, the hip flexor release, and it should take you to that video. Yeah, so there's, a, there's also a question that talks about the TFL. Um, and whether or not the tight hip flexors contribute to uh, tight TFLs. Um, in a sense, they do. The TFL actually does have some of its fibers that contribute to the motion of hip flexion. Um, however, primarily the, the TFL is meant to be more as a, as a hip abductor and a hip uh, rotator. So if, if the hip flexors are already tight and you go to do something that requires a lot of uh, strenuous activity, the TFL does have the potential of kicking in and performing more work uh, that the hip flexors aren't doing, which would ultimately make it, make it more tight. So yes, definitely that's a good question. It can definitely contribute to the tight TFL um, with the tight hip flexors. Oh yeah, and to answer the, the first part of that question, um, so if you're if you if you're thinking that your tight hip flexors may be contributing to having a tight TFL, you can pretty much do the same thing that you did with the hip flexor and the ball. So the TFL we know kind of comes from the the front side of the pelvis and hits uh, the side part of your hips over here. So if you come off of that bony bump that you use to find the iliacus and come straight out down to the side, you're probably gonna be on that TFL. And then you can take the ball over here. I'll show you it on my left side, over here. And then same thing that you did with the hip flexors, you're gonna to wanna to just stay on that ball. Like that, it's going to be a little bit more sensitive just because of how, how much more uh, superficial that muscle is, or how how much closer it is to the body or outside of the body. And then you you would just do the same motion, which is going side to side with the knee bent on the same side.
All right. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you guys.